Welcome to the One Within All Back to Innerverse. I'm your host, Chance, and I'm grateful you're joining me today as we go on yet another quest within our consciousness and create a conversation worth consuming. The fantastic guest we'll be kicking it with today is the phenomenal Frank Castle, aka Frankie Fearless on YouTube. He's an artist at heart and an activist for actualizing truth, love, and our ascension to the optimistical prime timeline where our infinite potential can manifest and be expressed. One big part of the pathway to emerge from the chains and pains of fake authority and corrupting conveniences is the liberation of our cognitive freedoms. Not only must we unslave our minds and retrain our thinking, but we must also learn to coexist with consciousness outside of our own bodily containers including both the plant kingdom's wisdom and psychedelic medicinal teachers and the spiritual life forms that communicate with us once we've squeegeed that third eye and uh, Q-tipped that third ear. <laughs> Frank is a living example of finding freedom through the ceremonial use of unconventional panaceas such as ayahuasca, because after an injury prevented him from pursuing his musical passions in 2013, he sought healing and wholeness from the shamanic toolkit and found himself called to self-initiate his own future as a light worker. Nowadays, Frankie can be found in New York City doing his Neo Shaman thing and online at his YouTube channel, Frankie Fearless, where he's sharing regular live streams to inform and empower the many souls out there who are currently lighting up from within as a response to the encroaching darkness without. Frank also has a sweet merch website where he collabs with other artists to provide freshly crafted clothes with woke sigils and dope designs that can help you stand out as a beacon of fearlessness wherever you go. His website is IamWeAreFearless.com, and I'll make sure to hook it up in a link on the show notes along with everything else relevant that we talk about today. Also in the show notes is the link to Interverse on Patreon, patreon.com slash Interverse. For the amount that you would tip a waiter at a restaurant, you can get a whole month's worth of access to all the extended episodes, the second hour of each show that we do every week and there's some other good stuff in there too so check out the patreon link if you want to subscribe and get quite a lot for your dollar or your five dollars whatever <laughs> mention also it's important to mention also that there's a video of this episode i haven't really done a good job informing y'all but i've been making actual videos of the uh, episodes lately so you can subscribe on youtube or bit shoot or something like that, go to the website and look for the episode you want to check out on video. It's a lot more fun because I put the crazy backgrounds in there and you can actually see our expressions. And today we are ready to get started. Uh, since all that introductory business is complete, we can finally kick it into gear with the man without fear. He's got the same name as Marvel's Punisher, but I think we'll see that the only criminals this castle kills are false ego ideals. So everyone, please engage your psychic powers to shoot a tickle of etheric energy out and welcome Frankie to Interverse. It's awesome to meet you, man. What's up? My brother, thank you so much for inviting me onto the show. And I'm very happy to be here. Uh, the Interverse. Um, I love sharing the message, putting it all together for everyone, being able to send it out to reveal your true purpose. You know, I'm looking at your shirt and I'm loving it. I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. And on my refrigerator is a picture of uh, one of the comic issues of the Punisher, where Spider-Man and Punisher are pinned against the wall. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. And um, all the guns are pointed at them and they're ready to rock. And I keep that there to remind myself daily, you know, because my it's not the Marvel thing, the Frank Castle. That comes from uh, the hip-hop group that I was in, right? So that's been the running name for 25 years, right? It just stuck. And the comic book thing and the superheroes and the wrestlers and all that, it always just magnetized to me. It did something to me. It, it maintained the fantasy in this world, the imagination. The stories were so incredible, but yet the characters so relatable. I learned more from Captain America and his ideals and from Spider-Man with great power comes great responsibility as well as many others. And uh, it kept me on track. It kept me on track. I'll go into Aya and I won't listen sometimes because I'm a meathead and they'll send sp like Spider-Man and I'll go, come on, really? And he'll be there live and in person. And I'm going, really? And then he just starts talking and instantly I'm involved in the conversation because somehow this takes precedence. It's uh, he's always in situations where he, he understands that this power and responsibility thing, well, who else better to speak to than him? 
and he tells me, hey, if I got mad at Jay Jonah every time he writes something in the paper, right? I would be a murderer for trying to just go, I would just go after him and kill him. I can't do that. I'm a hero. So he's, he's just got to do his thing. I can't even get mad at it. I just look at it and laugh. And it was metaphorical to exactly what I was going through with someone else. And the message got through. And then it's like the lights come on. There's no Spider-Man. It's just you standing there with ayahuasca. And she's like, do you feel better? And I'm like, I do. And I'm ready. And I'm ready for more. Boom. There you go. Right. So this is the journey that's been there the whole time for each one of us, the hero's journey to unlock. It's up to you to choose to unlock that journey within you. But why wouldn't you? And once you start, there's no going back, but why would you? What is the new normal? Do you even want normal? What is normal? It sounds like an artificial intelligence telling me how to act. That's what I think normal is because none of us are normal, right? We're creators, creator beings, light beings. We're literally source itself having an experience within the human body, ready to expand awareness into what we truly are, into the awareness that we're not alone. We are connected. We are one, but we are the individual and we get to come here and play. But before we do, we got to clean this mess up. See, Mother Ayahuasca is Mother Earth. She made a call to source God for some, source for most. Please help. Look what's happening here. And we were sent with the call to be born here through her, to become her children, to have 4% awareness in these human bodies and not know what the hell is going on, right? To expand into the hero's journey for the flower to uh, bud and open, open and then bear the fruit to become the hero that rescues Mother Earth that she called for. So in turn, it's just like a big cycle of life. She made the call. We came in, birthed through her, we're her children. We rise and properly handle our business on this planet. Get mother back into shape. Mother's important. She's the one that puts everyone here. I am of her. I'm an ambassador for the planet itself. The soul structure has given me all the permission I need to do anything that I need to do. And there's no one that's going to say otherwise. Why? Because I don't even listen. I just move within my permissions from the highest of high sources, my highest self and mother. It's the only permissions I need in this world. Are you hurting anyone? Nope. Uh, are you hurting yourself? Nope. Are you helping others? Yep. Are you keeping it real? Yep. Are you lying, cheating, stealing? Nope. Are you taking your vitamins? Yep. Uh, do, do you have animals? Do you take, yep. Do you have an old mother you might help out? I do. As a matter of fact, she's pretty awesome. Right. And then you realize, hey, man, we're really good. We're really doing some good stuff around here. Now, as I clear out my demon, you don't have to worry about it on the planet anymore. See, Frank's demons taken off the table. I handle my business. Right. You want to change the world. You change you start with you. You don't wait. What are you waiting for? What are you, what, what's tomorrow and what's the other day when you live in the now moment now all the time? Right. It's like a projector in the. You could look back at what it was and you could think what it is ahead, but you're actually in the center frame doing your business. But if you're not centered on the frame, you're busy doing all this other stuff, worried about tomorrow. Oh, I wish you, you know, the good old days, man. Oh, you're still living in 1980, my buddy. Okay. So now I know how to deal with you, right? You got to live now, now. Well, you know, Monday will start. Well, what's today? It's uh, Tuesday morning. Are uh, you going to wait till next week to start this? You, you want to stop smoking? When, do you, when you don't want the cigarette in your hand, that's when you throw it down and say, I'm done. That's how you break the addiction. You don't wait and you go, oh, I'll start Monday because you're not going to start Monday. You think you might, but you never do. I bet you everybody's got an exercise bike in their house somewhere or some kind of equipment they don't use. It's just sitting there and there's clothes on top of it. Right, right now, that, this is how you get it done. And you put that work into yourself and you realize something else is happening. I don't have time for the distractions. I don't care about left and right and what you're telling me to do and Coke or Pepsi. I was talking about this the other day, Coke or Pepsi or water, right? Well, they fluorinate the water. So there's your water. So if you don't clean it, you beat Coke. It's like being in a ritual when you drink it. It's like killing yourself because that stuff eats away at everything. You can clean your car with it, get the rust off it. Pepsi, ooh, Pepsi. Okay, so these are rituals and rites. 
So you pick up the Pepsi and drink it, you buy it and you, you agree to drink this and the secret flavor in the Pepsi. And I used to be a federal inspector. So this is how I know these things. The seat, one of the secret ingredients is a cloned baby part, right? So there's like a cloned baby kind of DNA thing that they take that and inject it into the, into the liquid, right? So that becomes part of it. So you're, involved in the ritual when we hear about satanic rituals when the pedophiles and the child traffickers this is what's going on it's a giant black magic ritual against us and you're like well then what what choice do i have because there's those offshoots own everything so basically there's nothing i can do false there's a million things you can do you're just not aware of it you get yourself a water filter right you take the water from the sink in big barrels you walk over you pour it in the top you let it go through the fluoride filter, you wait 20 minutes, and then you drink fresh, clean water. There's a million ways that you can do this now. Why? Because there's a million people like me running around going, uh, they're creators. They're creating the ways for you to be able to do this because they don't like what the others are doing. So you can make the choice. You can vote with your money. You can say no. You say, I don't agree with this. I, I put my foot down. The answer is no. All this negative stuff in our life, right? Oh, the world's killing me. Okay. Who's killing you in this world? Trump. All right. They go, Trump. What do you mean? Trump's killing you. Where on this piece of paper, if I drew a picture of the orange man, is he actually hurting you? Show me. Here's a picture. Show me. Well, he's ruining my life. You, what are you doing? Worrying about him when you have things to do for you. He's not actually doing anything. This is all scripted. You're in a hologram. You're in a hologram. A matrix. I know. I know Roxy. Roxy the cat only talks when truth goes flying. Um, so you're in a hologram and you're worried about stupid things, right? So ayahuasca like backs you out of the program and the distractions, right? So chance for the whole time you and I have been running around like cats and dogs. Oh, we got to make it happen. We got to get, we got to do this. We got to do that. We go to nine to five, nine to five, school, 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 whatever. Right. And then it amounted to so much. Right. And then Aya goes, Hey, just take a look at this. And she pulls you back. And you become the bird instead of the dog and the cat. And you go, wait a second. You mean I'm on a chessboard and there's chess moves happening? And these are my choice points and all this. And they're like, yeah. And if you're not playing the game, someone's playing you for you. I'm like, what? On all these layers. So when you're lazy, these things come in and whisper in your ear. Uh, you're not making the moves you're supposed to. You knew you should, but you don't. You know, you get this to happen, then this happened. You're not on your optimum timeline. I'm like, how the hell is anybody supposed to know this? They're like, well, you're supposed to come up. You're supposed to evolve from out of the distraction with protection around yourself. Like your aura bubble just starts to glow and you rise up, take a look down and go, oh, this is what's going on. And then you kind of sink back in and start making moves. And then you're 10 steps ahead. And you're like, how is this happening? This is the shaman magic. This is what it is. We were all sick. We're all sick. And then uh, the shaman decides this isn't about DMT world and ayahuasca beings and ETs. It has nothing to do with that. You get usually hurt on the hero's journey. Terrible. Hit rock bottom and work your way up from there. And I saw they were trying to put me on every drug uh, available. They were trying to put things in my body from my back and my neck when I fell and hurt myself. And I said, no. I can't do this. It, I'll be addicted. And I already, as an inspector, knows what's in all these products. I don't put any of this in my body as it is. And uh, I'm like, what is going to help me in this world? And they said, you won't be walking by the time you're 50. And right now I'm 46 and I could probably outrun everybody in the room. Right. So I'm like, what's happening here? I wasn't supposed to be able to walk. I pulled me back. I didn't even know she existed. I thought it was a drink, dude. I thought it was a drink. It was going to help heal me. And I walk through something and I heal myself or something. I was very meathead about this. And when I, when I observed it, I was like, wow, you can just do this. And she was like, absolutely. You're the creator. You could act as long as you realize it's you and you're the all and that we're all connected and we're all one, like the greatest teacher sends you back to yourself where you want to meet source, want to go see God, go sit inside God. And you, you start arguing points. You left us, you did this, you did that. And source turns around and tells you, I, I only got one question for you. Why are you not creating? You're me, you're, but you're you. So that's the gift. So you can do anything I can do. You're supposed to do more. That's why you're out there creating. So you, you could do all the things I didn't think that could go on. Like, this is a big symbiotic relationship of awesomeness. And I went, oh, I've been misled. Complete dummy. 
like, oh, my bad. And I jumped back in and started my mission. Again, the purpose was revealed. I was like, oh, so we're allowed to, and it's not supposed to be like, and I can heal myself. And when I got back in my body, my neck was moving and my back was flexing. And I was like, wow. And now six years later, I'm just way better than what I was. Not a hundred percent healed, but I will be eventually one day. Why? Because I believe it to be so. Why? Because I'm the all. Why? What does that mean, Frank? What, what, is, what does the all mean? It means you're everything. I'm everything. Well, what does that mean? Okay, so check it out. It, it doesn't mean something or a few things. It means everything. Get it? Well, what do you mean? I'm the air you're breathing. Or this space between spaces where you think is nothing but space, where that, where the earth, where the things, where the grass, where the, where the, the atom, the, at the every atom, I'm the desk, I'm the cat, I'm the dog. Should we continue? Everything. I'm an ambassador to the whole thing, the universal construct structure of the whole thing, that and so much more. Right? So I'm not playing games. I have to be, I have the purpose is to arise in this. Um, why would you want to do anything else? You see how the world's going. Would you want the new normal or the old normal to actually be there? Do, do you want it to go back to normal? Normal was garbage. I was sitting here going, when's the next big thing? Like I already knew what was going to happen is this is unlocking. I just didn't know the absolute potential that we could have. You could visually see it under ayahuasca and you could see future timelines and all kinds of cool stuff, but it's nothing like being in the human body and then actually living through something where you're like watching it unfold slowly because in the densest arena it already happens and it, outside of this time that we're in, we win. But then that trick, we like win up here and then in the high density and it trickles down into 3D, 4D, 5D. Like it's got to come down into here. So for us, it takes forever. Why is this not happening? Where's the solar event and where's the flash and where's the ETs and where it's all there, man. It's all there. Just look, we, we, it's never not been there. This is the craziest thought in the world. It's always been there. You're just becoming aware of it now. We are just becoming aware of it now. You mean it's been here the whole time? They're like, yeah. If you were coming in to save the day and it was a giant heist, you would come in and say, give me amnesia. Don't tell me. Right? It'll just unlock in the code. We just distribute code in through energy. It's like a computer. We're going to hit enter. Three, two, one, go. Frank, unlock. Chance, unlock. Paula, unlock. You know, Starship Feel is now available. You're like, I don't even know what this stuff means. Well, it means your higher self is walking into your body. What do you mean it's walking into my body? Well, you're like a Russian nesting doll. You're in everything because you're the all. It's multidimensional, multi everything, universal, everything. So you're going to become the singularity. Boom, 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 boom. Here's the big guy. Here's the smallest of small coming in density, one density, two density, three density, four density, five density, six density, seven density, all the way up to 12. That's the octave. And it goes highest self, lowest self, boom, 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 meets you in five. And we're headed into five. It's an, it's an awareness and unlocking and the energy and the frequency as we rise within that. And each one of us has a, your own universal structure. You're in your own program yourself you're the projector of what you need so each one of us are in whatever level whatever layer that's why you just can't make some people understand anything and they just don't get it right like i could talk to my mother somewhat but if i hit the reptilian mark she's out right my grandfather i could just say there's more just understand there's more that's all i can say well how do you know because you guys keep so, the old bodies, the old function and forms that can't unlock anymore because they're on their way out. You all believed in um, uh, ghosts and um, paranormal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, you, your great grandfather, that's the guy that walks through the house that we've all seen. Oh, and when grandma passed, you said she came to you. Well, if there's nothing, how are they doing that? That's all I'm saying. Now go have a good night's rest. Because that's all, that's it. They shut down after that. You take your phone out and show my grandfather some cool video or something. He takes a deep breath and he goes, oh, he's afraid of the phone. That's Star Trek to him. He can't believe it. My mother is like, oh, okay, I guess I'll learn how to text. You and me are like, oh, this is really awesome. We could do our shows from it. 
and the kids are like, you're not doing the show correctly. Check this out. And they're just ripping through it. And you're like, what is going on here? They're, they come in unlocked. Each suit is making the next version available, the next unlock. But we, um, a bunch of us, have chose to unlock here in, in this now at whatever age you are, whatever part of the university you're in, you're graduating, graduating class. This is what they talk about. Um, the, the harvest, the rapture, the whatever. They, there's names for it all over the place. Anything that has fear attached to it, as is man, man, being, man did that to keep you in fear. Anything that's just you rising within yourself and you're not going into a spaceship like, oh, they're going to save us or getting launched into orbit into heaven or something. That's not what it is. There is a separation, but it's not a separation. It's almost like you, your frequency rises to a point where you're above the nonsense. Thus, you're moving through like it's magical because you are literal magic. It's more consciousness in your body. You do see 10 steps ahead. Your awareness is that of, I can hear your thought. I know what this one's thinking. It's better to speak to this one than that one. And your day gets planned out like this, and it almost looks like you're dancing through it, right? And they used to have this when um, saints would be depicted. I, man, I talked about this last night. It's crazy because I smoked DMT one night. And I ran into the bedroom to tell Paula that we are the light warriors, right? We're the light beings. It's us. And I saw in, in the mirror, I heard a crack, but it was in the back of my head. And I, I looked in the mirror. I'm not afraid of that stuff. I, I just smoked it like a hit or two and then looked in the mirror like, oh, oh, what's happening? And I had a halo. It went bonk. And I was like, oh, yeah, dude, it was so real. So I run in the bedroom. I kicked the door in and was like, wake up. She was watching Game of Thrones, eating popcorn on the bed. And she looks at me and she was glowing already. And she already knew. I'm like, do you know? And she's like, yes. And she wasn't under anything. She was just staring at me like, uh huh. I'm like, we have halos. And they, she's like, Frank, I know already. I discussed this with you first day we met. I already told you because she doesn't do psychedelics like I would but she's done them, but she's already in the, some of us already have the gnosis. Yes, it's true. Of course, of course we're source in the body. You didn't know that Frank. I'm like, no, nah, I'm five years in bro. But I played catch up because there's a purpose to this. Some of us get taken. Some of us are watched. I think we're all watched. Some of us are tagged. Uh, they're trying to predict timelines. All kinds of weird things are happening. They don't like it when we rise. Right. But as a Jesus, right. Like if Jesus returned, it's just one guy. Yeah. An unlocked guy. It's Jesus, supposedly the son of God. No, it's the son of the son and an unlocked avatar will just kick butt pretty much. So you're like, whoa, Jesus, what did Jesus say? Space, I call him space Jesus. Space Jesus. What do he say? Well, he said, you could do anything I can do. Probably more, way more, way, way more. Well, he, technically he's talking about you unlocking your avatar in this singularity lifetime your higher self steps in. So we don't need one Jesus. Everyone's going to be space Jesus. Like it's, he's just a dude. You get to be chance, the unlocked, uh, light being it's you. And then you'll, you'll go through the, they call it the Christ consciousness. You pass that part. You pass the Christ head. I've, I'm already past it. The people in the fearless family group shout out. We've already, envelop this and go, yeah, there's more to it. Way, way more. Why limit yourself to thinking Christ is over there or God is standing there watching you from here. There is none of that. That doesn't exist. It's you. And it goes up the chain inside of you right to it. You're connected directly to it. It's like, if you only knew how connected you were and what you were, none of this crap would matter. You would just be creating and having a great time unlocking evolving inside of your flesh suit. We're deprogramming it because we've been programmed forever through a deception. There is all of that. There's all the nonsense that has happened. But imagine this, you're so powerful that the only way to stop you from doing what you need to do is to get you to be convinced that you can be stopped, right? So for us comic book fans, we're basically Franklin Richards. Each one of us is a Franklin Richards. It's the most powerful character in the Marvel universe is the, the young kid that could control everything. His future self shows up as Jesus and comes back. He's the son of the uh, fantastic four, right? 
And I'm like, why is the Neo character always got to be there? And it's like, well, that's not really for the comics. That's just to reset stuff. It's like a fail safe. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. They're like, yeah, that's you. What, what do you mean? It's me. No, it's you. It's you. It's chance. It's this one. You guys are really that. So the only way to trick you guys is to um, program you and put you in distractions, constantly flashlights at you, program you through the TV flashes, talk to you about stuff that's not a hundred percent true, put it in books and television and movies, especially movies, um, kids things. So you're programmed from a young age and then you go to school and sister Stabile is beating Jesus into you. And it's not Jesus externally. It should be Christ within you. The kid will unlock in an early age, right? When you meet space Jesus on the other side, drinking ayahuasca and you go on these journeys and meet these characters, they're like, dude, I'm like a level within you that you unlock like in a, to keep it simple, like in a video game, cause you're in a holographic universe in a flesh suit. So you're furthest from source in density. So we dropped to one D so that's like rock bottom. You can't go any further. It's like inside of this space, boom. And that's where you have like your plants, your dirt, things that live in the dirt, uh, that are unaware of other things like ants is like 2d. So you got 1d, 2d, or, or like the elements would, uh, would be 1d you. So you're an elemental. So you have all that attached to you. Then the ants are in 2d, right? So 3d Frank shows up, puts his foot down. The ant doesn't know it's Frank. It doesn't even look up and go, Oh, you're there. It has no clue. It'll just walk over you. It doesn't fly. It doesn't do anything. It just walks through. Okay. So they're in that I'm standing there in 3d right? Then there's 4D. 4D is an awareness that you're in 3D and you're looking down going, whoa. And then you're looking up going, there's more. There's just more. There's more information coming in. I'm standing in the sun and I'm looking at the rays and it's pouring information into me and I'm eating it. What does that even mean? Well, you, it's just consciousness, your, your consciousness. And it's being controlled by your higher self, even though you have free will and all that. Picture the Sims and you're playing um, I don't have a, a control here in front of me, right? You're playing the Sims game and you're like, I got to make the guy go there. Sometimes your thought is so much faster than what you can make the character do. It's almost like unreliable to a point. And then that's Commodore 64 version. And now we have PS5 coming. So you in, in the high bred computers where you could just boom, 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 boom. And you're like, wow, it's so much better controls. So as you're unlocking the higher self, it's like, yeah, you can do it. You're listening to me. That's the voice in your head. The voice in your head when you go, hey, I wonder what's going on today. Well, it is a beautiful day, don't you think? And I'm like, yeah, it's pretty beautiful. Like, who do you think that is? That's the other guy going, man, recognize this. Be aware of it. You're starting to listen. Continue. Don't go left. Go right. You know you shouldn't go down there. There's 10 of them hanging out, and they're all drinking. They don't like your face because you like video games and superheroes. Because your name is Frank Castle. Let's see if he's the Punisher for real. No, it's really just a music thing, guys. Oh, now I got to go down there and fight everyone. No, just don't go down there. And you're like, oh. And then if you go down there and you get beat up, it's like, well, I told you not to go down there. And you have these arguments with yourself. Who do you think that is? Big U. Okay, Big U wants in, into the body. The only way to do that is to clear out the programming, to make space, to release the negative. Uh, that's why people do yoga. Like memory is stored from lifetimes through traumas in your muscle memory and your DNA and you release it as you're stretching and doing things and you're doing movement and you recognize it. And you're like, um, I'm going to view what I'm being shown and I'm not going to get wrapped up in it. And I, I don't really like it, but I understand it. I'm sorry to, if I, if, if I can't apologize to whatever is bothering me, I'm sorry to the universe and I'm sorry for myself. I love myself too much. I'm never going to do that again. It's just a lesson learned. And because there's no one there judging you. It's just you judging yourself. So you're judgy McJudgy with you and it holds you into position thinking there's someone there judging you. You just let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, make room and you get lighter. Then people notice, wow, when he's in the room, look at the smile. He lights the whole place up, right? He just shines with light. What is that? It's more big me in me. It's like when you were a kid, I was a kid, I was fat right? They call me Husky. <laughs> I was fat. So they were, you put me in snow boots, uh, snow pants. It was like two people had to tuck me in to this outfit and it took a long time and it was annoying. And then I could only move like this. You're doing the same thing. 
the Russian nesting doll, the one, two, three, that's all already here. We're going into four or five. The big guy's coming down. Bong, 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 bong. All versions of you are coming to one version. And you are to pass the trauma, the negativity, the damage done over lifetimes of distractions and nonsense. And it's just not working out. Death and problems that never got absolved or whatever. Your karma, we're going to push that all out in one lifetime. Boof, done. And now you take you you resume responsibility of being the all and showing up on the planet and remembering who you are and what you are. I mean, it's a pretty big deal. Sorry, I just ranted like a. I couldn't stop you, man, because uh, we had a definite psychic link up going or something because I was just kind of like mentally a nudge in one direction. And then within a moment or two, you started going in that direction. There was very little that I felt like I needed to at any point interject because I didn't want to stop that train. That's a beautiful train, man. I've been in that type of flow state. Like you were just in before when it's just like, all right, when two or more are gathered in my name, I am present the the creator or the source. That's literally that's what, it. that's what's happening right now. Like yes. right now I'm just, I was just getting messages from higher self by, not even having to listen within. I'm just watching this reflection of of uh, source with me on the screen in this magical technological way. So but. I'm seeing your higher self, right? Because I'm I'm open with my higher guy, and they're just nodding like they're getting it, right? And it's just juice coming into our heads, right? From me to you, us to them, them to each other, because it's all, and then that everyone, everyone to source itself. I quote, I have fun with this. It's source prime, prime source, prime creator, right? Like Optimus Prime. Like it helps me recognize that I'm humble because there is one more. It's the, the great whole of the whole thing, but I'm getting an opportunity to be that. So it's like, I'm grateful and thankful. And then it's like, let me get my butt to work and it's time to become more. It's like yeah, the, our expansion is infinite, right? Like it's infinite. There's no stairs. ceiling. Exactly. So there's no even like the being humble thing. It's just recognizing that yeah, I'm I have greatness and I'm limitless, but uh, there's always I can always rise up and become more. And that electric connection between higher selves and this sort of harmonization that can happen between people when they're both on aligned with that intention. There's they're, those higher selves aren't even anywhere else. They're literally right here. Like we talk with our hands and we're like, we use these metaphors like hires and lowers, but it's more closely it's standing over us. It's in, like or literally right. it's like our core, like the higher is actually the inner. It's this yes. weird in, in and up and out and down. That's kind of how the trajectories correlate. If you were going to map them to a yin and a yang in a sense, but man, there's a lot yes. of cool stuff that, that went on in that amazing monologue. And first of all, you, you already said this, but the hero says no. Like that's what the sacred masculine is actually about. That's what's really been missing for a while uh, is the actual saying no to evil. I, I use this example all the time because it's perfect. But when Neo becomes enlightened in the movie, he the first thing he does to stop the bullets is he puts his hand out and he says no. Mm -hmm. and that's that's what's really missing in, in the world uh, in mass is people saying no. Like, okay, I don't want to get into a whole conversation about this necessarily unless you feel like you want to get into it we can but i just want to use as an anecdote what you were talking about how you don't have to actually get mad at the the hater if you will yeah. uh, because we we start out with the programming with an actual emotional visceral reaction to whenever we're like challenged or checked or criticized or whatever and we do have the ability to completely release that and not just let it go in the moment, but get to the point where it's like it never even permeated your barrier. So it's for me, this happened at the grocery store. There's a woman in the line behind me who like started chewing me out about not having a diaper on my face. And <laughs> she was trying to get the cashier to uh, she's trying to get the cashier to like enforce the policy or whatever. And the cashier is my friend. And I go to that store every day and I talk to this person almost every day. And we're you know, we were cool. She was like, I'm only wear this because I have to. And then I ironically, there's a sign right in front of the person who was complaining that said, uh, you're not allowed to have conversations about the the face diapers. But 
because they were tired of people complaining to cashiers. But anyway, my point is that <laughs> like past past me before I unlocked as far as I've unlocked now, I would have like felt this actual welling up within my body of like emotion. And instead I was just like, thanks for your concern. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if I'm really bothering you, don't worry. I'm about to step away and leave the store. So it's all good. And like it rolled off of me like water on duck feathers. So I just think that that's important to know that even in the heightened levels of division that some people are experiencing, even when it like comes right at you, you have complete and total freedom and sovereignty over your own vibe. And uh, honesty will always be the thing that diffuses tension better than anything. Calm, rational honesty. It's all you need. And it the fear is really just trying to can the real thing that the fear does is try to convince you that you need to not be honest, that you need to control something with artifice, if you will. Like contrive some way out, contrive some way to like solve something when in reality the solution's already here. It's always been here. It's the truth. And so being in the truth at all times, including being honest about everything literally causes you to embody the the energy of that, the energy of that shift of the, the solar flash, whatever you want to metaphorically call it, the Christ. Like it's already immediately accessible. We've already ascended. We're just playing a game. Like, That's what I was no, saying. It, it's it all comes good. down into density. It already occurred. We already won. How do you hear out? I'll just say this. You, you grab one of the reptilians and you grab them and you go, okay, really quick. I'm just, I'm just so curious guys with all your black magic and baby eating and child trafficking and all this crazy stuff, right? Like how did you plan on defeating source? What was your plan? Like really? So you're, you're 4d. You're like captain of 4d. You're like, dude, I am 4d champ. It's like, cool. I'm from 15. What's up? So how did you plan on defeating that? Oh, you mean you're a bunch of fourth graders just talking nonsense. That's really what this is. Cause you, okay, here's the piece of paper again and their source. How did you plan on, they have no answer because you can't defeat source. Your source, I'm source, like you're defeating yourself. You, you, it gets into this whole thing and then we're here unlocking and they can't unlock that. They can't, they're in a skin suit that doesn't allow that unlocking right at this moment. They're running three chakra points. So you were like talking about welling up of the emotion. It like comes out of nowhere, right? So when we're crazy and we go nuts, if you were to watch a person, it would be like emotional outburst. Why? Ah, I'm so crazy. Look, we're at war. Womp, womp, womp. Go get him, kill him. Womp, womp. Okay, now here's what you were doing. Womp, here it comes, the womp. And then you go, ah, I'm in control. Now, with that breath, anything that you speak, is going to speak with the volume, no matter how you say it, with the power of all those things that were powering out of you when you were angry, it's just going to come out in a, in a, oh, you know, my bad, have a great day. And they won't be able to say anything to you. They're going to, uh, 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 uh. it's like you short circuit them because you're so powerful in your true, in your truth, because the truth is there. It's right there in front of you. We like to dress the truth. We like to put a little tie on it and say, oh, you look in purple. Maybe today it's this. And I'm like, no, the truth is the truth. Stop dancing around it. Step back and take a look at it. Accept it. Understand it. And now move ahead. And that's, that's, how, you, that's how you do this. So your emotions, if you can control them, that's your energy source and your output for your creative explosive abilities, your manifestations and your, your structure within you of having faith and a belief and an understanding. This is real. This is who I am. And I am in this now moment. And there's nothing you're going to tell me that's going to stop that. And with that, I'm unstoppable like the juggernaut, right? Once you get <laughs> momentum, you can't stop this. And we have the momentum. There's not going to be a Jesus space. Jesus, he'll be there but he's not going to come back and save anyone. We're all going to pop off one at a time. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, look at this graduating class. They call it the harvest. People think the harvest is like, oh, they're going to come and eat your soul or something. Ain't nobody coming to eat nobody's soul. Listen, anything tries to eat me, I'll be right back. This is my argument with them. They're like, we'll crush your soul and do, okay. I'll, and I'll be back in one moment. As soon as you go, 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 boom, I'm right back. Do you want to do this again? You're going to trap me in what a human body and then kill me over and over and over and over and over and over. Guess what? I keep coming back over and over and over. 
until it unlocks. All created things will see their end, but you can't destroy the uncreated. Yeah, you you're just that's, the, you're the uncreated. That's what you are. That's what we are. Yes, like we we are that which is all of it. So you're not going to stop that momentum. You can put it in a box, but eventually the box is going to start shaking. The top of the can is going to start coming off and then bop, all the walls come down and you're like, whoa, this is what's going on. But once again, we're dealing with a situation where we'll use Neo again. They don't wake up people that are older in the matrix because they can't handle it. Like my grandfather, he couldn't handle it. He'd be like, what? Ugh, he'd keel over and die. My mother, if it just instantly flashed and he, she had the knowledge of it and the, the, the dead relatives were standing in the room because there's really nowhere to go. It's just a frequency and you just tune in and look, the next frequency has everyone there and they're all like, hi, and your body can't handle it. You know, when I met Ra for the first time, which is a collective, he came through a portal in my basement at 2.30 in the morning when I was drinking ayahuasca and a being stabbed me with something to, it was like an injection, but through, it was through me and I, turned to complain what, what did you do to me and they were like rest and they put me down on uh, this pullout and I was just moving my head and my neck it was really so crazy real um, I'm looking over and the portal opens he starts coming out and my heart started thumping but everything went into slow motion and it was like what's happening my heart and in the slow motion the heart was going bah, 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 bah. so he backs out he could, he sensed it immediately and says, you've never seen this. You're you, you know, I'm here. You, the higher you, but Frank, he don't know nothing. He has no knowledge of this. He has 4% awareness. So even though you've been cool with some of these beings and all kinds of stuff, me just physically, physically being in the room with you, with your eyes open, seeing this stuff will kill you. You'll die. So we're going to do this a little bit at a time for you. So I had to wind up doing it. Hey, I had to wind up doing that uh, uh, again the next day. Little injections. Uh, that's Paul, everyone. Sorry. My theoretical translator. Um, well, no, say hi for me. <laughs> yeah, Chan says, what's up? <laughs> so a little bit at a time. And then the next afternoon, not on ayahuasca, I had the same experience outside in the sunlight. And I was able to handle it. I shook a little bit. I thought I was going to pee myself. And then it just went away and I was able to stand in the truth. Truth is hard to handle. What's the truth? Well, this thing is there. So how do you handle it? An emotional output. Ah, I'm going to go run and jump off a cliff, commit suicide, pop from having a heart attack, start fritzing out or recognize it for what it is. Take a deep breath and then go, wait a second. All this in the end is here for me. So Ra was like, oh, dude, we're here to unlock you. You're the creator. On this level, you're just little Frank. On the other level, you're higher than the high, the most high. You guys like to be divine with it. So yes, the most divine. We're not quite there yet. And you're like, oh, wait, I'm literally source. Literally. The holy of holies. It's literally the whole, the whole thing. <laughs> the whole thing. So that's why they, when you're in their presence, you're like, oh, I must be important for some reason or, or just little old me doesn't No, they're there to unlock and help you unlock because you're the most. It's a joke we, we do here in the house, right? When I go under and I show up and all these beings or whatever's there, I'm like, oh, you're all here for me. This is a party, my surprise party. And they're like, yes, he's, un he's getting it now. This is why it's not just balloon balls of jewels that speak to me. I don't deal with that nonsense. I, I deal directly with the highest of everything. And I go in and I deal with it. And you know what they do? I get put in the arena with the lowest of low things. And I get wisdom through experience. You want to know about reptilians? Not only were you already a reptilian, boom, now here's the information. I'm like, whoa. This is crazy. Okay. And then here's them going after you and everyone else. And I'm like, oh, this really sucks. Well, okay. Now do you understand it? Um, yeah, it kind of sucks, but I get it. And it's, it's part of the truth and the life. It's just one little part. Okay. Can you deal with it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. Okay. Now you could go talk about it because now you know what you're talking about. Right. And now you have wisdom. You, your purpose is you have the ability to talk about it, but you can't talk nonsense until you go through it. So that's why I do my show each week 
it took me a year to do the show to even come out and talk about it. I was a, I'm a hip hop artist. Last thing I wanted this to, to go on. But when I was chilling with the uh, Wu-Tang Killer Bees, we were in a back room and they were showing me all stuff about me through astrology and astronomy and all kinds of weird stuff when we were on the tour. And then they were like, no, this is real. And I just came out of five days of this uh, like session ceremony, one after another, after another for five days. And I'm, I was saying this stuff was real, but nobody at the tour wanted to hear that. Everybody just wants to get laid and sing songs and stuff and, uh, and kind of be gangster and all that. So I'm not like that. So I'm hanging out trying to have a good time and they're listening to me and they pulled me in the back and they said, check this out. And then I was opening for them because I was the only fire sign there out of like 40 groups. So then fire in, signs. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. So I was, I was like freaking out, but then they, they were like, no, this is real. Demons are real. The, the rituals are real. The issues Wu Tang had with getting shows and, and why you never really see them all together. They just make the excuse like, Oh, it's hard to get everyone together, but that's not really the truth. The truth is it's them versus the industry. And the industry is just a giant monster that could basically eat your monster if you're not big enough. And this is why you have to pay. It's a pay to play on that level. Right. You money makes money. They'll tell they'll get into this argument with you all day and all night. I was signed to Def Jam. I know how it works. I was there when Jay-Z walked in the front door. Right. So I get it. I watched the rituals being done. I got kicked out 16 weeks. Right. They they fired me. They took my contract and ripped it up. All five of us. We were watching one of the rituals. That the ritual was the the last straw. They tried everything with us. They tried making a, you know, you have sex with this thing and this one and do this with this one. We didn't do anything. We were just like happy dudes trying not to be part of this. We didn't understand it. We, there was no ayahuasca at that time. We're just young guys. And then one night I was there, uh, I was kind of working. It was late night and they, they were like, you ready? They set up this whole thing. They opened this door and it, I thought it was the closet. Um, I do, sh I did a ton of shows on this. They opened it and it was only three feet deep. There was a, uh, they were blessing masters, they said. So they would put this down on an altar. They put the, 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 I guess, the original copy of the song right there. And they would all start chanting with candles and all kinds of weird stuff. I'm like, who taught you this? I don't even know. I, I don't know what this is, but I know I, grew, I went to Catholic school. Sister Stabile would beat everyone's ass right now. She'd come in here with the, the little ninja nun with the bell that speaks only Italian with belts and rulers. And they would beat the hell out of everyone here. And they were like, dude, shut up. And I'm like, no, how do you know how to do this? This doesn't look right. What are you putting in there? And they're like, we're putting in a higher power. I'm like, there is what? I'm like, are you guys cuckoo? Like I, I was a truther and stuff, but give me a break. I didn't believe in any of this stuff. And they were like, okay, get out. And they just kicked us out. And then they took our contracts later on in the week, ripped, you're out. And I was like, uh, we just got fired from being part of like the greatest thing ever. And everyone was like, we don't want to be part of that. Whatever that was is dark. And we, we don't, we're, we, this isn't about us on that uh, music level anymore. It's about our, our spirit and being together as a group, being the way we are. And we just walked away. We got more popular. Bringing Disney booked us right after that. And then we just started making money. And I was like, whoa, talk about walking away from one thing and starting another thing. And I just used Disney because we, we, we were shocked. So we got hired there. They were like, no cursing, no cursing. And you could just play. And we played everywhere. And then that got us into the next realm, next realm, next realm. So it was an interesting uh, journey, interesting path, but all this is going on. Meanwhile, within it, I'm like, so it is all real. And they're like, Oh yeah, you just went and saw it through ayahuasca. Apparently you and her have something going on. And I'm like, I don't know what I am except the, all they keep, like I was in source and source just said, you're me showed me in a mirror inside of itself. It was the big white light. And I was like, I got words to have with you, big guy. Right. And he's like, well, go ahead. Anything, anything you want. I I'm, I'm, I was like shocked. I'm like, Hey, what is going on here? And uh source was like, you're me. Look, look, just look in the mirror. And I was like, well, I don't know if I want this responsibility anymore. That's the whole thing, man. That's the whole thing that caused the whole so-called fall. It's like, I don't want to be in charge. Even that word is funny because it's referring to an it's energetic only you, though. charge. Yeah. I mean, the, my, my experience with like, 
DMT, for example, I've literally shot straight to the core, saw the giant face come out of the alien letters and numbers emerge out like in three dimensions, like a magic eye puzzle. And it's like, you are already everything. And it was like repeating all the things that I already am. And it was just listing off every cool and powerful thing that is in my imagination. It was like, yeah, you are already love. You're already truth. You're already source. You're already God. You're already light. You're, you know, just going really rapid fire because I didn't have much time that I'd be in that space. But then it sent me back. And uh, I've, I mean, I've seen, I've seen similar things to what you're talking about. I've actually never experienced ayahuasca, but uh, my first time in a deep psychedelic experience, I never came out the same. I mean, like literally the, the, the person I was always intending to be walked in and was like, all right, I'm here now we can get started. And a whole different trajectory started like that very night I saw in, in a sense, I felt the impression of everything that I was going to become in that life or in this life. And, uh, before that I'd never had any kind of inkling of what I was meant to do. I was just sort of wandering and yeah, like doing the job, like I had just got out of college, had no ambition for anything. I was just maintaining my existence essentially. But up to that point, I had gotten myself healthier. I didn't know what else to do other than to put energy towards that. And that's what really unlocked the new experiences and the synchronicities brought themselves to me, if you will, because like I wasn't as blocked on my internal energy flow. So I think that's an important thing to always remind people to take away from any conversation is like the the most clear path to realize your potential as source and, and see it and feel it at all times is health. It's not through like pretending the body is this meat robot puppet suit that all that really matters is your spiritual well-being or whatever. It's actually they are the same thing, like the way that a seed becomes a tree and then the seed is gone, but it's in there. It's still there. The seed is your divine spark is source is like your higher, your higher self, your soul, whatever. And, but the, the body is the tree that it's currently taken on as its form. So it is it in a literal and like energetic sense. And so respecting that is important and you yeah, know, it's the whole shebang. People that get thing, overly yeah. spiritual and then they're not physical in this space enough. Uh, they're you're just not doing it right. It's, it's like, actually um, sending the message to your body. I don't need you anymore. I just want to go in the etheric realm. So I'm going to go ahead and shut off. Yeah, that's how you get cancer. Right. That's how that's how things start to occur um, within you. You know, you know, what's really funny. I was I was cleaning out the fluoride filter yesterday, two days ago. And I realized the gunk, I pulled the containers out and I just wanted to see what the filter looked like. And it, they're good for a year. It's the six month mark. And there was this, now the, the water in the bottom container comes out crystal clear, but the water in the top container and the stuff that's in there, it was green slime thing attached around the, the entire filter. So I went and I, took it, I had to use a hose and blew it off, right? In chunks. And then everything started working again. And I just kept thinking, that's us. You're the filter. And we got all this stuff attached to us in this grime. We're not cleaning it off, right? Right. And then also within you, we're drinking and eating this stuff. And if we're not careful on how we're filtering our, our materials or what we're putting in, into our bodies, our body has to filter that the buildup on that was only six months. That's water. That's just water. Right. So when they say you gather the black goo or your insides are gunk and all that, that's literally what that is. And I couldn't stop putting it together. How we're the great filter, the great magnet, the great attractor to everything comes to us and filters out. And how, if you don't ground the same thing happens to you spiritually as happens to that filter. You just collect those parasites and things eating off your aura and, um, you know, not having your energy when your chakras aligned, whatever you want to call it, because all of it's relevant. There's no wrong way to do it. And all of it is relevant. Everything is based and fueled by your emotions and your imagination. Yeah, right? man. Imagination is the primary form of thinking. The other types of thinking are actually forms of imagination. It's not that imagination is a way of thinking. It's actually the thing that everything comes out of. <laughs> but okay, so we've got like 
five minutes left in the free hour and it's not as much space as I meant to leave you to talk about the stuff you can, uh, people can connect to you through like your YouTube channel and your website, but you know, do what you can <laughs> let everybody know how they can actually get more of these uh, awesome Frank Castle wisdom monologues, man. Right, right. <laughs> I've been enjoying them. Thank you so much. All right. So my YouTube channel is the primary place to get everything. Um, I have every interview that's available online uh, on there in the playlist sections. I have fearless volume one, fearless volume two, which is what we're currently doing now. Volume one was when I was on true frequency radio and I did the show there. So there's almost 200 episodes of that. A and true comic think, book fan, you're putting them in volumes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, well, the new story run. changed. It was like that book is closed. This book starts a fresh new thing. And that was when we left radio to do video. So now we're on, on to that. And it's all new things. So if you didn't listen to the very beginning and you jumped in now, yeah, we kind of scratched the surface to go back. You got to clean your chakras. You got to breathe properly. You do the Wim Hof technique or this guy. The term Neo Shaman is a little bit from everyone's because it's everyone's got a piece of the puzzle. So if I took a little bit from everyone's thing, whatever I feel and discerns with me, that what I feel works within my abilities and it comes from here or there or this information, I use it. I don't go, well, I'm Christian, so I can't use that. I'm not, I'm just the all. So I want to know all of it. So if this is working here, I like that. Give me it. I want to learn it. So I learn it, get wisdom experience. Then I add it to my repertoire. I put it in my utility belt. I pull it out when I need it. Right. So you can come over and visit us over at, uh, uh, Frank Castle fearless on YouTube and, um, and you know, like it and share it if you like, and, uh, let me know what you think. And I am, we are fearless.com. That's where we have the graphic designers and us all from the fearless family got together, kind of put, um, stuff that they found under their journeys, the different beings, characters, sayings uh, that relates to them. And then they get paid from that. So we kind of just kind of put it all together. So we have a, like a generalized place where we know it's the great I am, we are right. It's just a place for us to come together and be that family. It's not about making a business out of it. It's about providing and being part of, you want to be part of the team, you come check it out, you buy something. If not, just like it. If you don't like it, don't like it. Don't listen. <laughs> and I, I like to play it that way because uh, becoming big business isn't really the way to do this. It's free information. The information should be free. It became a secret society because you see people aren't ready, but now we have so many people on the planet and so many people are popping off when we have the internet there's people ready everywhere, right? We're just going to be four. Here's my prediction. Four billion of us are going to pop off. Four billion creators, not just Frank and Chance and this one and some Hindu guy in the mountains. No, four billion. But there's still the other half. So that's what we're there for, to make that catch. So come by, check us out. Let us know what you think. Man, awesome. I appreciate this. Oh, this has been fun, man. You were really on one this first hour. Can't wait to talk more in the second hour. Uh, probably going to get into our more into our shared like loving of uh, superheroes and <laughs> stuff like that. Because <laughs> that's always a fun conversation for me and I don't get to have them that often. But yeah, we'll see what happens in the, the second hour. It's going to be really fun and it's been a blast getting to... I mean, like, okay, so I know that sometimes you just know things. So like with you, whenever I came across you online... Uh, the, the energetic imprint of what you had going on immediately resonated inside me. It was like, there's one, you know, there it takes one to know one, I guess is what they yes. would say. But <laughs> I just knew like there's one. So I didn't even really investigate you too deeply before I like made contact and invited you on. And I knew I would investigate you more over time after that. I just wanted to get the ball rolling. So thanks for being receptive and giving my humble station your awesome presence and i uh, look forward to the second hour and also just having a you know an online relationship with you going forward because you're doing cool stuff and we definitely are on the same mission same team from the same place we're the yes. same thing <laughs> awesome so thanks for being here and uh, everybody check us out on the second hour through patreon linked in the show notes and uh, thank you frankie thanks so much for having me have a great night everyone
All right, here we are, guys. Hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I enjoyed having it. Frank is a super fun guy. He's clearly having a lot of enjoyment in life. He's exuding that type of positive, happy, funny vibe that I guess, in my opinion, is an indicator of someone being in some degree of health, uh, mentally, spiritually, physically. And yeah, he's an awesome dude. It's been like a week since I had that conversation at the time I'm recording this outro. And I definitely look fondly <laughs> on that day. It was super cool. Uh, if you didn't check out the second hour because you're not a subscriber to Interverse Plus, that was a very interesting second hour, I must say. Uh, first of all, we talked a lot about superhero stuff because, of course, he goes by Frank Castle. I don't know if that's his like original, real legal name or what have you, but that's also the name of the Punisher in Marvel Comics. And I've always been a Marvel Comics fan my whole life, especially in my early 20s when I got super into comics, like reading them and collecting them. And yeah, I wish I had the money I spent on comics right now. <laughs> I didn't want to buy a whole collection of comics. Anyway, that aside, we, we did have a fun conversation about comic books that we both have an interest in and this archetype of the hero, what it means, how it's been twisted over the years into something darker and darker, hardly even resembling what you would think an actual moral hero should be. And specifically, I got into talking about Spider-Man because that's like my original favorite superhero. Got the spider tattoo and everything just to back whenever I was interested in getting tattoos. I only got a couple, but I'm glad I got that one because as we talked about in the extension, it represents how great power means you have great responsibility. And technically, we all are omnificent, which is a fun word that means possessing all creative power, all creative capacity. Basically, infinite potential on a creative level is what omnificence is. And guess what? You actually have that. Even when you consider all the limitations you have as a human, put those aside and just think about what actual limits are on your creativity uh, in reality. Like, is it not still infinite? Think about music. For all the limitations humanity has with music or painting, isn't it true that there's never the exact same song really made twice or the exact same painting, especially a painting made twice? Everything's now and in the moment and real and your creative power is there. That's where the reality is. And you could choose anything despite the limitations you have as a human being. You're actually still omnificent. There's no way of arguing that away or, or tricking yourself into believing that's not true. So that means you're also responsible for all that creative power. Ooh, that's like adult time now, <laughs> grown up time. And it's a tough maturation process for a lot of us that have been brought up to think that actually we are just this like limited fictional character that is only the role that has been assigned to us by family or society or circumstance or whatever. So yeah, I love talking about Spider-Man for that reason. <laughs> and also because I played this really ridiculous, heavily programmed Spider-Man video game uh, earlier in the month. It was like 2018 Marvel's Spider-Man for PlayStation. And yeah, I checked it out because it was like on super cheap sale. And uh, like I said, I'm a fan and I play too many video games. And so I thought, OK, what kind of crazy stuff is Disney going to put in this one? And I explained a lot of that in the plus extension. But one thing I didn't know yet when we had the conversation, because I hadn't got there yet, was that at the end of the game, spoiler alert, uh, Spidey's Aunt May dies of the uh, <laughs> the thing that represents the pandemic that we uh, apparently have right now in 2020. So, yeah, definitely some brutal programming in that game. If you want to hear more about it, then check out the plus extension. Of course, that was just the beginning of the plus extension in... Um, Speaking of Patreon perks, there's a, a tier that we do private patron conversation type podcasts with called Multiverse. It's for $12 and up subscription level, but you know, just a regular plus member can hear these conversations when we release them publicly, or not publicly, but to the patrons. And uh, last month, I haven't got it like published yet, but we actually had this conversation already. And we kind of oriented that whole conversation around things in media that... Um, reflect what we're seeing in 2020 in a weird and suspicious way. Like, well, that's too specific and there's a lot of it. And we barely scratched the surface of all that so-called predictive programming, if that's what you want to call it, or synchromistic clues to the, uh, to the current 
health and sanity or lack thereof of uh, reality or of people's connection to reality. That's really the distorted thing. Reality itself is healthy. It's going to keep existing. It's self-existing. Your self-existing, believe it or not, <laughs> makes you reality. That makes you the same thing as nature. And uh, your identity on paper does not exist other than fictionally. So there's just the now, the ambiguous now. But anyway, um, I got off track, but I wanted you to know about that multiverse chat that's going to come out soon for patrons to listen to because you'll at least like to hear it. And you're missing that entire bonus monthly episode if you're not a plus member. As of course, you know, the big drawback to not being on plus, which is only five bucks a month, is that you don't get the second hour of this conversation and the other ones. And Man, five dollars doesn't seem like much, especially with how much inflation is starting to kick in. Um, pretty soon, that's going to be like one dollar a month. But whatever. Right now, it's five dollars a month. I need your help for the show. I'm getting a lot of help, more than I've ever gotten from you guys, the audience, more members than ever. I love that because that means people like are hearing the second hours, which is what I really want. I don't want to like keep that away from anybody, but. I need a way to reciprocate what I'm doing here because it's unsustainable for me to do the amount of work I do on the show and do another job and then expect that I'm going to keep getting better and better at what I do with the show. So I do need your help for that to accomplish that, but we're getting there. More and more of you are kicking in where you can. And of course you get something back. That's pretty sweet. And what else did we talk about in the second hour? This was a fun one. Uh, we got into talking about like, big archetypes like uh, archangels and lucifer and poseidon and meeting those things as they really are for what they really are if you will and that's like in the mind as a construct of your mind a thing in your imagination but that can be animated by your awareness of it and by sort of this collective unconscious egregore feature of the uh, consensual human reality where if enough people put energy into an idea or a thought form, it kind of becomes real. So we, we explored that. I mean, it even got to the point of Frank was talking about meeting reptilians. And I was like, well, in this context, I think I can accept your experience. <laughs> I mean, of course, everything that you don't experience yourself is technically hearsay, but Frank won me over and I'll listen to him talk about reptilians in the plus extension all day. And we'll probably talk more about that in a future conversation. And it's also interesting that it went that way because I know revealing how many video games I play and how I should probably chill out on that and do something else. But I've been playing another really weird game that was actually good and not like super brainwashy mind control -y like Spider-Man was. It's called Control. I'd only heard of it recently, but it's from last year. It's far out. I might make some kind of like content where I talk about it in the future. But I think you should play it if you like games at all, because it is really weird it has to do with all the like the paranormal <laughs> expanded consciousness um extra mental space like entity attachment you know contact basically what i'm trying to get at is this game describes how the real aliens are really not aliens they're in your mind they're a part of you and it's a part of you that you just haven't discovered yet that's what makes it the unconscious or the unknown but that the real entities out there to meet they're from inner space and uh, also the reality that you're inhabiting right now that you consider to be the external. That's um, sorry to burst the bubble here, but that's inner space. <laughs> you never got out of inner space. You never weren't there. That's a big, a big joke to actually think that you went anywhere other than inside yourself, because that's the only thing that exists. So in uh, all itself, there's the other spoiler alert, but Control is a really wild game, and in that game you do encounter like actual solid, for lack of a better term, beings that are coming from like the psychic realm created by mass projection of belief in certain archetypes and all that. And it's really neat. I mean, they did their homework, or they're just really the people that made that game are definitely just into occult and paranormal stuff to a degree that they actually kind of understand what it's about. And I liked it. So anyway, it felt kind of tied into the things we talked about with Frank. So I wanted to bring it up because uh, maybe you'd like that weird game. I really liked it anyway. Um, let's wrap up this uh, outro here. It's been an awesome conversation and I love getting to talk to you in these outros. Although sometimes I really stall doing them. Once I get in here, it's like, what was I waiting for? This is fun. I love you people, <laughs> but uh, there's other ways you can help the show. I got to remind you of that before we 
really wrap things up. I'll try to go through it quickly, but man, there's a lot of stuff you could do other than subscribe on plus you could just straight up leave a do donation through PayPal. Someone did that for me today, which was really cool. Um, thanks for that. And you know, I don't even ask for that as my main way of getting a donation. Cause I like that. If you do it on Patreon, you get something back, but you can, you can do that. There's a link for that in the show notes to just leave a PayPal donation. I get euros that way sometimes, which is cool. Different currency somehow it works. But anyway, uh, the other way you can support the show is through the, all these are in the show notes, by the way, there's one big link area that says support interverse. And so uh, other things you can do, to do that support would be get on the secret energy store, which is a really great metaphysical shop with lots of supplements and other goodies. I've sampled a lot of them. And uh, if you use the link that's in the show notes on my website, you will give me a nice commission for shopping there. And there's some cool stuff there like cell salts or she legit and um, cleansing kits. Those are for sure something I recommend. I mean, I need to probably do a cleanse myself before I recommend anyone start cleansing because it's been a while, but yeah, that's all at Secret Energy and a lot more. I get a nice kickback for that. Don't have to do any extra work. You could do the same thing, actually. And if you want an affiliate link to become an affiliate, which gives me affiliate credit from your affiliation, and it's just amazing synergy, uh, let me know. I'll send you that. Or you can just sign up on your own without linking me to you. But what's cool is if you do that, then I get um, a little bit of a commission on the things that you get people checking out and buying, but you don't lose any of your commission. And Anyway, I hate this commerce shit. Sorry for talking about it. It makes me feel <laughs> like I'm doing an ad, but Secret Energy is a great store, man. I mean, I buy stuff from there. So if you want stuff from there and you want it to give me a kickback, do that because it costs you nothing extra. So it's kind of a win-win. Also, you can buy an Interverse t-shirt, which is fun. Uh, you can get a poster and I'll add more art to that store someday, which is the Design by Humans link in the show notes. You can join the tribe on our Discord chat server. That's totally free. You can just come in there and share information, ask questions, post pictures of your cats, whatever you want to do. We'll check it out. We'll we'll engage with you. And it's a safe haven away from the madness of Facebook and other forms of social media where there's no other distractions. Really, you're just like in there talking to the people like AOL Instant Messenger or something back in the day. So that's fun. Discord is free. You should do that if you like Interverse and you want to connect with the tribe or you know, have a conversation about an episode. I don't have a forum there so, or for the show yet, maybe someday, but I'm not like a big forums guy. So maybe never. So a way to talk about uh, uh, the stuff that went on in an episode and get some feedback and back and forth going would be discord because comments on YouTube. I mean, I'm just going to kind of reply to the comment or not even depending on how much time I have. But if you get it in the discord, maybe other people will get in on the conversation. And even if I'm not able to answer, there's some, something going on there but anyway all cool people there hope you jump in you can also leave a five-star review for universe on itunes that's a link in the show notes too if you use the itunes podcast app why not leave a five-star review it helps me find new people to listen to the show that might be into it so that's free and that's all this stuff uh patreon.com slash universe is still the best way to support and I'm going to play us out with a track by our friend James Maddie, a.k.a. Mindful Expansion. Also linking that in the show notes, as well as, of course, everything Frank Castle. And I've been talking about ways to support the show so much, I forgot to talk about Frank. Frank's the man. Love that guy. I'm glad we met, and I had a lot of fun talking to him. I hope you guys are able to uh, connect with him if you feel called or subscribe to his YouTube channel, even as a just a show of solidarity there. <laughs> Bump up his numbers. It's always good. And... I'm sure there's going to be content on there you like if you like this and especially if you like Frank as a human being after this conversation, how could he not? You probably like his YouTube. So, man, we are just blessed with a plethora of amazing conscious content out there. Despite the deluge of delusional bullshit, man, there's some good people out there making some cool stuff. I'm trying to be one of them and you can't even get to all of it. That's the, the funny thing is we act like, I mean, I act like everything is so horribly censored and restricted that uh sometimes and really the fact is that despite the censorship there's still like an embarrassment of riches over here with the internet of all kinds of people you could connect to and and learn from and man life's cool <laughs> maybe i'm just in a good mood because i spent a long time outside in the sun this afternoon on the beautiful gorgeous labor day weather labor day that's a funny holiday 
but hey, all right, I'm out. I'm going to play you out with uh, Noble Waters by Mindful Expansion. I probably said everything I meant to say in outro, but if not, oh well. <laughs> and thanks for listening or, or watching on YouTube if you do check out the video versions, which thanks for that because it's extra work to make it a video, but I kind of like to. There's a bit of artistry to it. It's all right. Let's talk later. For sure we will. Much love. Bye-bye. Another goodies. I've sampled a lot of them. And uh, if you use the link that's in the show notes on my website, you will give me a nice commission for shopping there. And there's some cool stuff there like cell salts or she legit and um, cleansing kits. Those are for sure something I recommend. I mean, I need to probably do a cleanse myself before I recommend anyone start cleansing because it's been a while. But yeah, that's all at Secret Energy and a lot more. I get a nice kickback for that. Don't have to do any extra work. You could do the same thing, actually. And if you want an affiliate link to become an affiliate, which gives me affiliate credit from your affiliation, and it's just amazing synergy, uh, let me know. I'll send you that. Or you can just sign up on your own without linking me to you. But what's cool is if you do that, then I get um, a little bit of a commission on the things that you get people checking out and buying, but you don't lose any of your commission. And Anyway, I hate this commerce -y shit. Sorry for talking about it. It makes me feel <laughs> like I'm doing an ad, but Secret Energy is a great store, man. I mean, I buy stuff from there. So if you want stuff from there and you want it to give me a kickback, do that because it costs you nothing extra. So it's kind of a win-win. Also, you can buy an Interverse t-shirt, which is fun. Uh, you can get a poster and I'll add more art to that store someday, which is the Design by Humans link in the show notes. You can join the tribe on our Discord chat server. That's totally free. You can just come in there and share information, ask questions, post pictures of your cats, whatever you want to do. We'll check it out. We'll, we'll engage with you. And it's a safe haven away from the madness of Facebook and other forms of social media where there's no other distractions. Really, you're just like in there talking to the people like the AOL Instant Messenger or something back in the day. So that's fun. Discord is free. You should do that if you like Interverse and you want to connect with the tribe or you know, have a conversation about an episode. I don't have a forum there so, or for the show yet, maybe someday, but I'm not like a big forums guy. So maybe never. So a way to talk about uh, uh, the stuff that went on in an episode and get some feedback and back and forth going would be discord because comments on YouTube. I mean, I'm just going to kind of reply to the comment or not even depending on how much time I have. But if you get it in the discord, maybe other people will get in on the conversation. And even if I'm not able to answer, there's some, something going on there but anyway all cool people there hope you jump in you can also leave a five-star review for universe on itunes that's a link in the show notes too if you use the itunes podcast app why not leave a five-star review it helps me find new people to listen to the show that might be into it so that's free and that's all this stuff uh patreon.com slash universe is still the best way to support and I'm going to play us out with a track by our friend James Matty, a.k.a. Mindful Expansion, also linking that in the show notes, as well as, of course, everything Frank Castle. Man, I've been talking about ways to support the show so much, I forgot to talk about Frank. Frank's the man. Love that guy. I'm glad we met, and I had a lot of fun talking to him. I hope you guys are able to uh, connect with him if you feel called or subscribe to his YouTube channel, even as a just a show of solidarity there. <laughs> Bump up his numbers. It's always good. And... I'm sure there's going to be content on there you like if you like this, and especially if you like Frank as a human being after this conversation, how could he not? You probably like his YouTube. So, man, we are just blessed with a plethora of amazing conscious content out there, despite the deluge of delusional bullshit. Man, there's some good people out there making some cool stuff. I'm trying to be one of them, and you can't even get to all of it. That's the, the funny thing is we act like, I mean, I act like everything is so horribly censored and restricted that uh sometimes and really the fact is that despite the censorship there's still like an embarrassment of riches over here with the internet of all kinds of people you could connect to and and learn from and man life's cool <laughs> maybe i'm just in a good mood because i spent a long time outside in the sun this afternoon on the beautiful gorgeous labor day weather labor day that's a funny holiday but hey all right i'm out i'm gonna play you out with uh, noble waters by mindful expansion I probably said everything I meant to say in outro, but if not, oh well. <laughs> and thanks for listening or, or watching on YouTube if you do check out the video versions, which thanks for that because it's extra work to make it a video, but I kind of like to. There's a bit of artistry to it. 
it's all right. Let's talk later. For sure we will. Much love. Bye bye. Yo, what's going on everybody? I hope you're having a wonderful day. This song is an offering to the ancestors. It's mindful expansion. Mindful expansion. Yo. Yo. Respect to the ancestors, loyalty and honors. Noble family members, royalty and scholars. Thanks to the elders, propriety and offers. Purified in embers, dynasty and waters. Flowing, sitting in a cloud, just floating. Growing, source wisdom, we decoding. Knowing, yeah, my cup is overflowing. Blowing like a petal in the wind that's unfolding. Uh, live and die by the sword like the noble lords. Heaven's been restored, you can feel it in the words. In the sequence of chords that are Manifesting worlds that are world into forms, then return to the verbs like an ocean to a stream. These words are interwoven into a mystical potion that brings you in the moment to a temple of devotion where only truth is spoken. Like a poor focused on a poem that is potent. All power to the most high, the omnipotent God. Awaken and rise, the inner dragon inside. Then soar through the skies and unite the divide. Abide the principles and align with the divine into your vessel. It arise majestic, like the wisdom of the wise let it open up your eyes and burn away the lies the truth purifies like a snake that sheds and dies then we are reborn united in our form roots deep enough to withstand any storm fluid yet firm like the Tao we change and reform respect to the ancestors loyalty and honors noble family members royalty and scholars thanks to the elders propriety and offers purified in embers dynasty and waters surfing on the breath of creation the magical force is a Awaken, illustrated harmony, life is so amazing. Praising the nobles with everything I'm phrasing. Heroes raising the chaos like a phoenix. Orders phase in the mind of a genius. Light rays enlighten the sage. So seamless like a lightning strike in the night. Strike swift like a viper. These words are cipher. You can feel them in every fiber. Like you staring in the eyes of a tiger. Tiger. Gaining degrees while we ride in a stream Flying in a dream where the brain is supreme Rain and complete with the tribe and my team Whole is the theme that our actions redeem With every choice we make We walk through those gates to achieve a new state And consolidate our fate Never deviate from the way that heaven ordained True flows in your veins It has all been arranged Like a puddle in the rain that reflects your vision Showing you your position in the illusion of division All you gotta do is listen and determine in your mission all will be forgiven when you give yourself permission yo thanks everybody for listening i hope you have an absolutely wonderful day aloha and pro vita if you enjoyed you know leave a like leave a comment leave a share 